Hi y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel, I'm going to run around back. I'm Rosie Henshaw and today I'm bringing you an upcycle project. Um, basically, I have this box and it opens up, it's got a little lid, it's pine. It's quite roomy, it's got the arms, you can have this stuff and it will sit on a laundry basket or a bench, you know, like. I don't know if you play piano, there's a little piano stool, keep all your books and stuff inside. Um, but today what I'm going to do this for is in my local area, they set up a new recycling scheme. So you have a little box for plastics, a little box for papers, and a little box for like food scraps. Now the food, 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 the food scrap one is actually going to be coming and staying outside because obviously it's a bit mucky and disgusting. This, I thought this would be a good idea to have in my utility room. I'm going to put two basket boxes inside to section it off. Um, and then I can have some plastic that side, paper that side. It's easy to slot out and put out when the dustbin's here. But I'm not going to have ugly plastic boxes um, in the utility room. I could even have this in the kitchen really, um, once I've painted it, because I'm going to go for a colour grey. It's a colour grey I've already got. Um, this is from B&Q, and this is a Valspar wooden metal paint, premium one. Um, let me come off a bit closer. When you go in there, you're taking something, the colour that you like, and um, they'll mix it up to whatever colour you want. And I've got half a tin left of this, so I thought this is the perfect sort of colour. It's like a beige sort of grey colour. Um, and the reason I'm painting this colour is because it's quite neutral, it's going to go with the decor in the utility room and also if we do decide to have it in the kitchen, put a little cushion on it or something and it will go with the flooring, it's like, like beige sort of grey and white tile flooring. Um, I had this mixed up, I had, um, what did I have mixed up? I saw something that I liked, it was a little hanging heart, it was a colour grey that I really really liked. So I went to B&Q and got mixed up, I've got a few of these pots of paint. And I've just got a normal standard paintbrush, um, quite a thick one. I'm just going to give it a little mix. Because sometimes you get like the little oil stuff on the top that sits on the top. So I'm going to give it a little mix. Now, I've already sanded this before I give it this coat of paint. And to be fair, I give it quite a thin coat. So it's quite right. It doesn't really need a key in. This is quite good paint. And um, it's quite good coverage. Don't need to prime it. Um, and also, I've given it a little wash down with a little bit of soapy water. And I've made sure it's all dry. So I'm just going to start off with quite large, like quite a lot of paint on my brush. Now as you can see, this paint is really, really going far. I mean, it's amazing coverage. This tin of paint cost me around, oh, boobaloo loops are hanging out. This cost me, I think it was £15 for the tin, but it's really, really good. I mean, to be fair, on most of my furniture, I use Farrow and Roll, um, but... I use this. Can't remember what I use. Oh, I don't know what I use this one. What I had an extra dining table. I did have in the utility room, um, and basically, my mum, my friend's mum, was looking for a table and chairs, and it wasn't even being used. So I said that she could have it, um, and that's what was used on this. So as you can see, this is going on incredibly. I'm going to have to retie my dress because I'm like coming undone, <laughs> and nobody wants to see that. When you have little textures, I have got a little round brush and you can sort of go in. But I just find doing little circular motions, it gets it right in the little grooves. Oh yeah. And uh, what I've actually got is I think I might actually maybe do this video in two parts because I've got a lovely piece of fabric and I could get a little bit of foam and a pulse with the top part. I don't really know though because I don't know if I'm going to keep opening it put scrap paper inside it and plastic yeah, it's probably not a good idea because I'll end up always having someone sitting on it and whenever I've got to put rubbish in it it ends up being on site so I've had quite a lot of questions on what kinds of paint I use and how I upcycle as you can see it's so dead easy it's really really easy it doesn't take that long I mean, I'm going out with my friend later. I was meant to go out yesterday. I had an awful, awful migraine. And I just want to say thank you, by the way. I've had the most lovely well wishes. I can hold it. See what I mean? You, sometimes I think you watch some people do decorating and they do prime and they do this and blah, blah, blah. And I think sometimes it takes you just buying a really, really good paint to sort of like not skip them sort of steps. And it will last long, and it will be. I mean, sometimes, I mean, if I was going to do this, and this is a nicer colour with a contrast underneath, that's a little tip. You can just dryly go over that, and you can see it sort of picks up all the detailing. That's how I do a lot of my stone sort of 
colour decor. I'll basically paint it in a colour like this and I'll go over it in like a white, which I might still do. I tend to don't really plan. I tend to pick a colour, what I want it to be, to go in the room that's sort of a neutral palette. And then I'll tend to pick whether I want to add parts or something. So like my dresser in the background, I then decided that I wanted to go on the inside and give it a slight two-tone colour. But I never planned to do that in the beginning. It's sort of, I think sometimes if you go with it, and then you just sort of like, it doesn't have to be a really well thought out process. It is only paint, and you can repaint over it. You can sand it. It's obviously quite good to be prepped, but I am, there's only a couple of things I've sort of done, and they've come out not probably how I really wanted them to be. But look how good this paint is, and I'm mean, this paint, I'm not using a roller on the flat parts, it's not leaving any brush marks whatsoever. Making sure to get all the nooks and crannies. Make sure there's no drips, and there isn't. And this is just gonna look so much nicer in this kind of colour. So I'm just gonna go on to the side now. Now another kind of good idea is, it's on a certain piece of furniture like this. Is sorry, because it's got like a shape on the inside. If you have a nice fancy piece of like wallpaper that you like, or like a nap napkin, you can decoupage this in the areas that you want it to sort of pick up colour, or you could paint that a different colour to have a bit of a contrast. Now, obviously this is, I could have picked a smaller project because I don't edit my videos. Well, obviously I say I don't edit my videos. I can't edit my videos. Um, I don't have the ability. <laughs> um, but, I don't edit, I don't edit. So I should have done something maybe smaller because this is going to take a little bit longer. I might have to do this in two parts. I did say that right at the beginning. But just so that you can get an idea, how long have I been painting this for? Yeah, seven minutes. I've been chatting, one side sort of slapped on. It's nearly two sides done. And that's the first coat. This is probably going to need about, I would say one and a half coats. So it doesn't really need two coats. It's like you do one coat and then you touch up with the last one. So it isn't really like another full on full coat. I will, if you want to have a look on my Instagram, I will be taking photographs of this once it's finished as well um, and styling it so then you can sort of see how it looks. Um, and my Instagram is Rosie Henshaw Home. I will write that in the description box below um, so that if any of you want to check out my Instagram, you'll feel free to. Honestly, I had the nicest well wishes yesterday. It was unbelievable. Like, I had the worst migraine all day yesterday. It was horrendous. And I literally ended up going to bed as soon as I put my kids down. Um, and it was broad daylight still outside. And I basically took a photograph from the view of my bedroom, how light it was in the windows. I basically said I had a migraine. And I had so many lovely people, so many of you saying such nice things and wishing me better, which I've not got round to doing. So I've been tidying up this morning. And I haven't um, gotten round to saying thank you. If any of you are watching this, then you know I am. I will go on there and say thank you as well. So, this does have an open lid. So, if you was going to repulsor this, I mean, it's got quite a big gap between it, so you might have to do the fabric on top of it rather than around the edges. But it's got quite a nice, neat flap. I never really paint on the inside of projects like this. If I have a cupboard, then I may paint the inside of the cupboard. But if it's sort of like, you know, something like this, I might probably open it. But you could always, if someone's a bit confused about recycling the new thing, you could sort of paint chalkboard inside there and write recycle that side, paper, recycle plastic that side, that arrow's pointing down. It's gonna be a little bit self-explanatory anyway, because obviously once it's been emptied, you might not know what goes in what side, but it doesn't really matter what goes in what side. And um, once there is already plastic and paper in there, it does sort of self-explain itself as to what's going in what side. Now, so this is the problem. This is why I love doing YouTube. I love chatting to everybody. It's so much fun. This is the only problem I have when I don't edit videos. Videos end up being really, really long. Or, 
I'm going to have to do it in two parts, which is a little bit annoying because I suppose there's so many upcycling videos on here. Why are you going to want to watch this when you can watch a quicker one? Now, I don't know what that's kind of looking like in the background. I'll turn it around a little bit more. Push it in so you can see. Get it more into focus. Yes, darling? Yeah, darling, it's coming on. It's got an advert. You just have to wait. So, I just always do this on my... I'm not quite... I'm not very messy with paint. Um, and I'm kind of go a bit slow as I go towards the edges. I sort of just drag the brush to the bottom. It gets the excess onto the bottom of the paint of the project that I'm painting and it doesn't tend to get on the table or oh, I say that and I get a little splodge on the table but to be completely honest this will come off with like a little minky or something on the rough side you can put paper down or some plastic bags I'm going to move my chair didn't really ever see this you know what I'm like I'm sort of like a little bit of a quick slapdash person so this literally takes this quick and it's the same with chairs and things like that. And you could, I don't, I wouldn't recommend spray painting something like this if I'm honest, um, just because you would end up probably with a few lines. So I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but that is completely up to you. Now, I mean, I've done that side. I've done the top on and that side, and the video has been going on for 11 minutes. So it's half of it done already. So 22 minutes, you could possibly paint a half piece of furniture. Have a little cup of tea, let it dry, and uh, yeah. I'm quite pleased I've got Graham's painting this. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the pink because it was fine first, and then a weird colour, and then it's been painted um, pink. I painted it pink, it was in my daughter's room. But as much as I love the pink, I think it just looks a bit sickly in the. Um, the utility room and I think it probably does need to be a more neutral colour. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so not, the day after I've had a migraine I'm never the same. I always feel slightly foggy headed and a little bit blurry like I don't really know what to do. Mind you, you probably think that I must have a migraine every day before I do a video because I'm always a bit foggy headed. Don't know whatever I'm saying. But I am um, yeah, I just go, I don't know, does anyone else suffer with migraines? They're just, honestly, I suffer so bad with them, they're awful. Um, and I just can't seem to get out of the cycle of having really, really bad ones. I always know when they're coming on. I have actually been to the hospital, I've been under the hospital, under neurology, and they've said that I have like absence-type seizures. Um, that can be caused by stress. They're not really sure what the underlying problem is as to why they happen, but it feels like a bit of a deja vu when they start. Um, but whenever I have a migraine, I tend to get that feeling after, and I think it's that sort of absence seizure that leaves me a bit more out of it than the actual migraine itself. Too much information. You're probably thinking, well, Rob, I'm watching you paint a chest, a chest of drawers. It's not a chest of drawers. Like watching you paint a cupboard, watching you paint a cupboard, but you not need to make your migraines worse. But I'm telling you anyway, I tend to, when I paint, I think of like really therapeutic things, or I'll think like life situations through, and like I'll think of like possibly other decor that I want to do. I never paint one thing a day, unless that be said. I hate painting art. I love painting, but I hate washing up paintbrushes and you know, sort of having the big old tidy up that you have after you've been painting. So I never paint one thing. So I normally always think, well, while I'm painting, get something else out. And that's how it ends up being the thing where I end up having quite a few pieces of furniture that's a painting the same colour. So you know. Hopefully, because this is taking a little while to do, because it's just got so many little nooks and crannies. If this was a flat kind of shaped box, this would have been done. This would have been done straight away. I can see there's a few little bits of pink on this side. Because I'm because I'm trying to video it, so I would normally do something like this in my garden, or I would do it on the floor, so I've got easy access, so I can get round to it quite easy. Um, but 
but because I'm filming this for you guys, it's a little bit harder to be able to paint without rocking, on, rocking, rocking, rocking on the table, making a large bang while I'm trying to do it. But I am trying to do the best that I can with my uh, filming capabilities. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at filming. So bad. I went to the charity shop again yesterday, guys. I managed to get myself a lovely little neck dress. Um, and it was in from the petite range, which I don't tend to buy from because I find the petite range of next are quite pricey, as are their tall range. Any sort of ranges that they do that aren't their regular, I think quite, they're quite like, you know, standard pricing anyway. But it was £58 this dress, it still had the tags on it, and I paid £4.99 for it from Age UK, and I was so over the with it. So I've just got my little painting dress on, this is just like my little cheapy, three quid in the sand because it had like a little like rip in it but I've stitched it. This is from New Look last summer and I like having like an old summer dress to do my like painting in, it's nice and cool. I'm sorry if you saw a little cheeky bit of bum or boxer shorts, so I've got a pair of my husband's boxer shorts underneath this. This is like a, my proper painting attire. So. I'm nearly finished painting the whole box. And if I'm honest, I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna do a little bit of like a rustic stone look on this actually. So like I said, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with this at all to start with. Um, and as we go on, then I start to think, do you know what, that's what I wanna do with it. So I've just got one last little section. I've just realized part of this video, like I'm literally just round the back. And all you can see is a little, what's say little head, little, little choppy face around the back. I should turn this round really. But that's the side that I want to dry, so I might as well leave that to your side. But literally, I am nearly done. I'll give you a little spin just so that you can see. I'm not lying, it really does take this quick to do something for new upcycle. Now, if you are just having a little neaten up and it's a very similar colour, I've got a little tip. Sometimes if I want to freshen up some furniture, but I don't want to have to repaint the whole thing, if you do want that aged kind of look, you can get like a little white, dry off the paintbrush a bit, so that it isn't caked on, like, so it isn't going to put too much on, and just sort of go over it and get sort of a damp cloth and wipe it off, and it sort of like removes the paint, so any dirty marks sort of get covered with like the white, but at the same time, it gives it like a little aged, antique, sort of white, shabby, chic look. But then you don't have to paint the whole piece. Now, I'm not going to give this its another half coat because, I'm, like I said, I'm going to age this. So right. Make sure there's no pink before I spin it because you'll go, you're lying to me, you're lying. I'm going to get paint on my fingers as well. So I used really a tiny, tiny amount. I've got a few little wear these round the handles that are going to be. So I've got one side there. Oh. One side there. And the other. So I'm going to bring that back round to the original face. And I'm just going to speed up the drying process. That sounds really silly. Go over it with a, there's a little bit of pink there. Now, I know there's a few people that do upcycling and stuff on here professionally, and they're probably going to be like, what on earth are you teaching people to do? But I just think it's kind of like that because I've twisted it round so kind of wet. Because not everyone has the time to do things like this. And if you like shabby chic, this is going to stand the test of time anyway. And this paint, I can't, ugh, I cannot recommend it enough. It is so, so hardy. It really does stand the test of time, this paint. I'm going to, I've just got paint on my face. I'm going to quickly go and grab my white paint because I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish this off now and basically this is a finished product I'm going to get a little stall a um, little stall? no 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 I'm going to get a little cushion put that on top that'll look quite cute I'm going to put the little plastic box boxes 
inside here. Don't forget to check out my Instagram, Rosie Hinshaw Heim, and obviously I'll style this and you can see what it looks like. But this just literally took, how was the time? 20 minutes. And without chatting, my little quick cup of tea, this could be a 15 minute project. I'm going to run and go get some white paint. If you hear any bangs, it's because I've fallen over. So. because he wants biscuits or crisps. Now this is satin wood. Now this is what I've done with my drawers in, all of my skirtings. I am a big fan of using what you have. I don't think you necessarily need to go out and buy tons and tons of stuff if you don't need to. This is made for skirtings and doors, so obviously this is going to stand the test of time. And because I sort of dab it on corners, it sort of makes that a little bit more hardy so it's going to last. And I've got half a tub left of this, and this is quick satin wood mid sheen, pure brilliant white from Dulux. I'm going to quickly show you. So it's one of those. Now, my piece isn't completely dry. So what I did, I'm gonna literally, just on the edge, sort of like the brush is nearly dry now anyway where I've gone over it. But I'm gonna sort of dip it in slightly, pat off some excess on the lid. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna pick up pieces like this across the whole piece. Now, it might like, just go along all the hard edges, picking up all the patterns on the, in the inside, just on the edges like this. I don't know if you can see. I'm gonna bring the camera slightly closer now so that you can actually see the detailing of the paint. So if you can see, it sort of just brings out like a stony sort of look to it. Can you see that? So it really, really, and I'm gonna go all around where the flowers are. There's a little bit of pink paint. Now, that's not exactly a problem because I can just go over that where it's the grey's kind of mixing with the white anyway. And that will just really, really give that like a lovely bit of detailing. I'm gonna hold this a bit closer because I think the lighting is stopping you from seeing. But if you can see, <laughs> oh my goodness, I told you I couldn't film very well. Oh my goodness, literally, you're going on a ride. You're going on a journey. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. So right. Oh, phone don't fall, phone don't fall. Phone don't fall. We'll sing a little song. And then I'm just going to touch up. Can you see it brings out all the detailing, makes it look really shabby and chic fantastic. And if you go too hard, you can just get a little cloth. I quite like it. Get a little cloth, a dry cloth, and get it off. And also, say for instance, you get a big blob somewhere, you can just kind of blend it out. You don't really... You don't really have to be so careful with this. It might look a bit weird while it's drying, but this will look very much like other things that I've painted um, that I've had quite good compliments on. So as I say, you haven't got to have it like that. You can blend in. Now, I probably will grab a little cloth because I've gone a little bit mad on that bit. But... I quite like the little stone effect, and especially on things like finials. Now, I barely touch it. I barely, when I'm going in the corner now, you'll see, I'm sort of holding my brush flat and just letting the excess tap onto the edges. So, to get that real stone kind of look. Um, and I, I really like that kind of effect. Now, this has been part one, because obviously I don't want this to be another hour-long video. So I will do another half part later on in the day. Um, once this is properly dried, once I've distressed and everything, and this is properly dried. And then um, I will be popping it up on my Instagram. So stay tuned for part two.
please look up, stay tuned. I'm gonna be putting them up at the same time. It's like you're gonna be like one part, then the next part. Um, so they'll go up together. So please skip over to part two when you see me finishing. I might even give it a little rub down as a distress. Um, so this has been part one, I'm Rosie Henshaw. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe still if you enjoy it. And give this video a like or a thumbs up. And look out for the second part. The second part will be me finishing it off. But it is coming on quite nicely considering it was like a little horrible little shabby pink thing. So, bye!